club and um, the bloggers community and also my two friends Angela and Anna who are here to support me. My name is Monica Vitrinska and I have been rejected my entire life. Um, I have been bullied since I was five years old. I changed schools six times. When I was 14, I used to have lunch inside a toilet cubicle because that was the only place where I felt safe, where I felt that I wouldn't be disturbed, my glasses wouldn't be stomped on and people wouldn't laugh at me. And whenever I walk into a room, a crowded room, maybe a function or a networking event, and you have a lot of people, and obviously a lot of people are having wine and they're laughing. And when there's people behind me that are laughing, I still irrationally think that they're laughing at me. Bullying leaves scars that you spend the rest of your life trying to combat. But that's not the only thing that happened, and I'm not saying that um, to get pity from you. I'm saying that to give you a bit of context for what comes next. Um, when I was 20, 21 years old, I was involved in a very toxic friendship with someone who turned out to be a narcissist and I ended up being depressed and suicidal for a year and a half. I didn't think that my life was worth anything and I wanted to kill myself because I didn't see any reason to stay alive. And when I finally pulled myself back out of it because I didn't receive any counseling, I never saw a shrink, um, so I sort of just, you know, bit by bit, I'm um, starting to get better. I promised myself three things. The thing number one was that I would never let anyone else dictate how I feel about myself ever again in my life. The thing number two was that I was going to aim to love the living shit out of myself every single day of my life. And the thing number three was that I would share that message and make every single person that I meet and talk to fall in love just a little bit more with themselves. But before those promises could be fulfilled, there is quite a few drastic things that happened um, in May this year. So within the space of a week, I was on a plane that caught fire. Some, somewhat, I had not only me, but every single person on that plane survived and we were all fine. I was flying back to London from a holiday. Three days after I was on that plane, I found out that my company went bankrupt and that we all lost our jobs and we weren't even going to be paid for the work that we'd already done. So I basically had two weeks to figure out my life and how I'm going to pay rent because I didn't have any savings or pack my bags and move back to my mom's house in France because I wouldn't be able to stay in the UK. And four days after I lost my job, um, there was a gas leak in my house. So you know how when you get those questions about your house is on fire, what are you going to take with you? I don't have to wonder because I basically had to grab my hard drive and leave thinking that I would potentially never come back. And when British Gas arrived, they told me, oh, if we'd arrived 10 minutes later, the building would have probably exploded. So all of that happened to me within a week. And on top of that, my boyfriend at the time uh, said that he needed to take a break from our relationship because what was happening in my life was stressing him out. <laughs> so needless to say, he's no longer my boyfriend. Uh, so I had no choice um, but to become self-employed because the idea of going back to a 9 to 5 job was giving me anxiety. And obviously I did what every person that has ever been let go of did, which was go to on LinkedIn and apply for like 400 jobs that I knew I would hate and that I would be really unhappy with. Thankfully, I never heard back from any of those jobs. But I was so stressed that I ended up having panic attacks, which I didn't have since I was about 18. I used to have them as a child. And I decided that I needed to chill the fuck out and just let the world give me what it wants to give me. Because I couldn't continue like that. I couldn't continue running my body into the ground and being stressed. And so instead, 
I decided to trust the world and trust that I was going to get the best things that are meant to happen to me. And I also promised myself that I would document that journey and share it with others. So the day I lost my job, I actually launched my YouTube channel. And if you ever go online and you find that video, I am crying and I am a mess. And I basically say that I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. And funny enough, the response that that video got was that nobody really has any idea what they're doing with their lives. And that so many people are scared of expressing that and that they found that that was a voice that was representing them. And so today I wanted to share a couple of messages with you that I hope can resonate with you um, that I've learned since becoming uh, my own boss uh, about six and a half months ago. And the first message is there is no such thing as the ultimate reality. There's only what you perceive as reality. And we may not be able to control outcomes and we may not always be able to control what happens to us but we most certainly control how we respond to it. I could have stayed depressed and cried myself and never been able to get out of bed after I lost my job and my relationship and everything else, but I decided to see that as an opportunity. And it may not be easy because we all go through struggles that leave us crying, that leave us depressed and that leave us without our life force. But we all have control over our mind and how we think the brain is a muscle like any other and how would you do with your muscles you train them so you have to train your mind to always look for positives and to always think of any challenge as an opportunity it may not be easy and it is easier said than done but i have tried to do that in my life and i am happy now so the second thing um, that i wanted to share with you is that you should take more risks. Unfortunately, I didn't up until the point where I lost my job because it wasn't a job that I liked. It was a job that gave me many opportunities and that made me travel. But I didn't take enough risks. I was pushed into doing that. And being self-employed is the biggest risk that I've ever taken in my entire life because I didn't know where my clients were going to come from. I'm a filmmaker and a photographer by trade. So I didn't know, but I took a risk on life because I couldn't put my dreams on hold anymore. The next thing is, you are not alone. I found through that experience of losing my job, people reached out to me whom I haven't spoken to in years, who I didn't even thought you know, they would remember me, but they did. And I have been shown so much kindness and so much compassion. And maybe I wouldn't realize how many of us go through the same struggles and, and feel the same kind of pain and insecurity if I haven't gone through that experience. So I would highly encourage you to talk to someone. If you're struggling with something, if, if you're scared, there is always someone who feels the same way that you do and you just need to find that person and talk to them. It could be a friend, a colleague, it could be the Samaritans that have a fantastic system in London um, if you need to talk to someone anonymously. But please talk to someone because you are always better off with listening here. Uh, I also, you know that film Frozen, that the clip where Elsa sings, let it go, let it go. Yeah, there's like a non-censored <laughs> version of that somewhere online um, that I encourage you to look at. It's quite funny. We are a society that is obsessed with outcomes. And I think we all have an image in our mind of what our lives need to be like. And unless that image comes true, we are so unhappy and so frustrated our dreams should make us feel elated. We should wake up in the morning and be happy, not be frustrated. So it's a very different thing to have a clear objective of where you want to go, but also it's a very different thing to allowing whatever will happen will happen. You need to have a balance of both. You need to know your vision, but you need to let life do what it does and just be grateful to be here. And there is a reason for what is happening to you. And if you cannot find a reason, then create one for yourself. You are in control of the narrative of your own life. 
And I think, you know, we're a society that's run by ads that tell you to be skinnier and taller and go on more exotic holidays and basically more, 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 more. But you are the only person that can decide what happiness means to you. So take advantage of that. Finally, I wanted to please ask you to come from a place of love and not from a place of fear in everything that you do in your own life. Because you will attract to you whatever you emanate. And if you make decisions based out of fear, you will always end up being unhappy. If you stay in a job that's safe because you fear taking a risk, you're always, always going to just be attracting more situations that bring fear. So the fear is always going to be there, and the point is not to eliminate it. The point is to do it anyways. You are scared, and you're still going to commit to your dreams, and you're still going to aim to live your best life every single day. Thank you so much um, for listening, and I hope that you all feel a little bit more loving towards yourself. And in fact, one last thing. Can you all say, I am perfect? Right now, on three. One, two, three. I am perfect. Okay, how does that feel? Now we're going to shout it. One, two, three. I am perfect. Amazing, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen.